Hello and welcome to part two of my How to Get a Five on the AP Computer Science Principles series. My name is Om Desai, and without further ado, let's get started. So, this is part two of what will be a six part video series. And if you, in case you missed part one, I recommend you to check it out. But in recap of that, we basically went over what we're going to do in the future, so what we're going to cover in the next topics. So let's start by getting what this video series will not cover out of the way. So this video series will not cover any of the subject matter. It's going to be more about strategy, so we're not going to teach you specific things about computer science, but more as to what you do to get a five, what kind of strategy you should use, and we presume that if you're watching this, you're able to get your hands on some resources that'll help you. For the same reason, we're not going to be talking about any like of the actual questions on the exam or any of the types of questions. We presume you can learn that and study for them on your own. Now that we're done with that, let's move on to talk about why you'd want to take the AP exam and why I took the exam. And so I assume that if you're watching this video, You've probably already made up your mind to take the exam, but if you're still on the fence about it, I hope this will convince you to take the exam. So, there are many good reasons for taking the AP CSP exam, and there are many good reasons for taking AP exams in general. For example, the subject matter co covered in the AP exam is more advanced than normal, and so you get to learn more by studying more advanced subjects. The AP exam ends up serving as kind of a motivation, because everyone wants to get a 5 on the exam, right? So, you, you study harder to get a 5, and so this leads to you becoming an expert in the chosen field of that exam. Not only that, but AP exams also have a lot of good uses in college admissions. For example, people who are doing college admissions might notice that you've taken an AP exam, and well, you need to work really hard to do good on an AP exam, especially get a 5, right? And it's very demanding, so colleges will think that you're able to meet the demands of college courses. In addition, they'll see that you're devoted to whatever subject you took the AP course on, you're passionate about it, and that you're willing to take a challenge in high school. And there's a link down in the description That'll give you more benefits about how AP exams can help with college admissions. More specifically, the AP CSP exam is good if you want to get into a technology school and so schools that you're passionate about computer science. Now, I chose to take this exam in 8th grade for a lot of similar reasons, and also because I was already learning about computer science. And I felt that Taking the AP CSP exam was the best way to learn more, and the exam motivated me to learn more and more, and I eventually ended up learning a lot more about computer science. As a bonus, I also have a good thing to sow college admissions, because I get to sow them that I was passing about computer science at a young age. Now, let's move on and start talking about how you can register for the AP CSP exam. Now, if you're in an AP class, then your teacher will probably register f for the exam for you. And your teacher will also give you an AP number. And you'll use this AP number to confirm your registration. And you'll do this by going online to the College Board website and typing in your AP number, which will confirm your registration. Once you've done that, you'll have two options available to you, two things you can do. You can either, not either, you can do both. You can, you can create your account if you haven't created it already, and you can submit both the explore and create tasks, and I'll talk a bit more about what those are later. Once you've done that, you should go to your next information session, and it's going to be held at your school, and it's going to consist of important information about the test 
so like where the test is going to be held, how it's going to be taken, and such forth. And the important thing is that you don't miss it, because there will be important information there. Next, when you're actually taking the exam, they're going to ask for some information on your answer sheet, and or they might ask for, let's say, how, what's your birthday, what's your AP number, they might ask maybe for your social security number, so you need to make sure you know these things. After that, you'll be good to go. If you're self-studying for the exam, though, it's going to be a little more complicated. First off, you're going to have to make sure that you can find a school that takes the APCSP exam and that will let outsiders take the exam. For example, the school I went to, people going to that school could take the APCSP exam, but you couldn't take it while self-studying. So, I had to go to a different school to be allowed to take the test. Then, in that school, you should find an AP coordinator or someone similar who's in charge of the AP tests, and they'll register you for the test. And after they do that, the steps are the same as the ones I explained before for when you're already in a class. Now, we'll show you the parts of the College Board website where you can find a rubric, the submission guidelines, and the scoring guidelines, as well as some other useful information. We'll start at the College Board website at www.collegeboard.org, which is the normal College Board homepage, so it has everything that the College Board does. And from here, you want to click on the link under AP, right here, AP Central. Now, this AP Central has a bunch of general information about AP exams and articles about AP exams and so on, but we want to see the specifically AP CSP test. So to go there, we go to the AP Courses and Exams tab, and we click on Course and Exam Pages. And we scroll down until we see AP Computer Science Principles. Okay. Now, here is the course page for AP Computer Science Principles. So, you can see a brief overview of what it is around here. And you can see some links around here and stuff about AP CSP. So, this is just the home page. So, yep. Yeah. Then let's move on to the course page, and this is about the APCSP course, and we're not going to focus on the course very much during this video series, we're going to focus more on the exam, but for now, just take a look at the course, just, just talk about things about the course. Next, let's go to the classroom resources page. Now, this page basically just gives you a list of resources from different links that'll help you study for the exam, help you learn more about APCSP. So you can learn about so you can learn about programming here, you can learn about using a computer here, going on. So if if you're looking for any resources to help you study for the test, this is a really good place to find them. Next, let's go to the exam. Now, the exam, this part, is one of the more important parts of the website. And here's where you can find some updates, updates about the uh, APCSP test. You can see updates right around here. And you can see due dates that are coming up, so as you can see, the performance, ta performance tasks, those are the Explorer Create tasks, 
are due on April 30th, the exam is on May 10th, and once you have a college bird account, you'll be able to submit your Explore and Create tasks here. And this just is an overview of how the exam works. So if you want to understand what you have to do, what sort of things you need to do, you should read this. And right here is the link to the AP Digital Portfolio. And so basically this shows how you can create a digital portfolio. You go down to the AP Computer Science Principles section and this shows you how to create a digital portfolio. You can download the user guide and such. And this is where you do submit the explore and create tasks. Now going back, we can go down and now here are scoring guidelines and notes. And this is very important and this will probably help you a lot while you're doing the APCSP test. So, going here, we can see, by clicking on these links, we can see what they're going to use for scoring. So, the explore, clicking on the Explore Task link will show the Explore Task Rubric. Clicking on the Create Task link will show the Create Task Rubric. And so you're probably going to need these to make sure how, how to do the explore and create tasks the best you can. And we're going to go more in depth in these rubrics in the next video. And if you want to, there are also a lot of sample responses from past, from past APCSP tests, so you can look at these examples to figure out what to do. Now, here's the AP Digital Portfolio link, and here are some more policies. So, going to AP Digital Portfolio link, again, you can see the same link we went to, and showing you how to go to the AP Digital Portfolio and submit your Explore and Create tasks. That's all we're covering for today. Remember to check in the description. I'll have put a few extra links and a few extra explanations down there. So, in part 3, the next part, I'm going to start by explaining the parts of the exam, the explore task, create task, and the written exam, and I'm going to go more in depth into the steps you need to take in order to submit the tasks. I'm also going to take, talk about the steps you need to take to prepare for the written exam, what you need to care about to get a 5, and I'm going to go over the rubric and show you what it says. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check the description below and subscribe to my channel to get notifications when I add new parts to this series as well as new informative videos. Thank you and goodbye.